Another question I wanted to ask you is, what is it that truly brings a man into heaven? I grew up believing that you have to be uh, baptized to go into heaven. Um, and I want to get into baptism a little bit because it's something that kind of like freaks me out. Uh, because I was baptized when I was, a, when I was a baby. And when I read the scripture, from my POV of what baptism is, I, it's like an engagement, like a proposal. Um, and if I was young enough and I didn't propose myself, does it count? Um, and then now when I'm reading the scripture, I truly feel like there was a Bible verse that scared me. And I want to get your guys' opinion on this. There was a Bible verse that scared me more than anything. Like, I ask her, I would walk around this neighborhood crying. Because I was like, I'm going to die. I'm going to die forever because of this Bible verse. And it was the Bible verse uh, that goes, Many will come to God and say, Have I not prophesied in your name? Have I not casted out demons in your name? Have I not done this and this and this? And God looks at these people that did his work and says, Be away from me. I never knew you. Forever. And in my mind, I go, well, these people dedicated their life to him. And they're like, see ya. Who am I, a man who just goes on YouTube and talks about God, sins every day. I, I'm sitting next to my girlfriend and we're not married. We fool around Cliff. I'm not proud of it. But we do. We sin. So if these guys are doing this and they're being pushed away, then who am I to be even welcomed into the kingdom of God? And a man explained it to me this way. He goes, because they came with a list of what they did. And the truth is, whatever I do here is not even worth it. And if we're going to measure my worth of going into heaven off of what I've done, it's not going to cut it. If you come to God knowing that the only way that I'm coming into the, to the pearly white gates of heaven is that I fully, with my whole heart, realize that when God looks at the cross, he sees my sins. And when he sees, sorry, I messed this up. I truly believe that when I go to heaven and they ask me what makes it worthy for you to come in, it's the answer is I'm not. And that he died for my sins. And that also opened up this beautiful avenue in my heart to realize that sometimes as a human, I don't know if I'm doing things because I'm just trying to get into heaven or because I truly love God. But when he just said, if you believe that I died for your sins and that is the reason why you are able to come into heaven, then all of the good deeds that I do, all of that, I'm not doing it to get into heaven. That's not what gets me to heaven. It's, I love Christ so much that he died for me. So I'm not going to waste this day being a piece of crap. I'm going to try my best to be the best that I could possibly be for a man who dedicated his life and sacrificed it for me. My works are nothing. I could spend every day being a monk and it still wouldn't be worth me going into heaven. That gave me so much freedom to realize that my sins and the good deeds that I do are not the measurement of what brings me into heaven. It's solely off the fact that I believe in a God that outweighs my sins. Is this wrong for me to believe? Or is it that you have to get baptized? You have to do all of these things. What is it in your point of view that brings a man into heaven? Yeah, I, well, it's amazing that you hit the cross and you got it so right. Because that, even for us, you after 69 years, am I allowed to say that? And 35 years, we still have a tough time communicating it on a university campus or debating with a professor online, it gets hard to communicate for that person to really understand it. At one level, it, you can communicate it to a six-year-old in, in some sense, like Jesus died on the cross, took your sins, and so now you can live in total freedom and love for him, for humanity, and a response and type of, of forgiveness as well. So, so I thought you explaining it, it, it's so rare to hear that, so rare, especially in this culture, because the cross is looked at as a bloody, dirty thing that nobody really wants to, to touch. So, so that's a big piece of it. I, I like where you went scripturally as well, in terms of Jesus is going to look at people and say, you're just going to have to get away from me, because you did it with a certain motivation that wasn't out of humility and understanding that grace is really it, that what he did for us should be the motive, everything for him, like you were saying. 
And so what, I, what you brought up earlier in terms of some of those friends, and probably speaking to this guy who you were speaking to, when you said, I think what you said was they try and show that they have a certain level of money that they don't have, and they put on a, a serious type of act, and it leads to things like depression and anxiety. I see that connected to exactly what you're talking about. Because these people are doing good works. You can look no further than the Pharisees, right? The Pharisees were, they were giving away more money, I think, than your average Christian, right? And I think they were also doing more social justice work. And yet, what does Jesus say? He says, inside of the cup, their hearts are just completely filthy and rotten. And, but the outside, it, it was beautiful. It, it was completely gold. So that's kind of a piece of it. I, I, whenever we do, we do confirmation for kids. And so it's simply a matter of, it's not infant baptism, but it's a matter of an outward expression of an inward decision where Christians can say, I'm going to come alongside of you, hold you accountable ethically, and then encourage you. Mm. And so that's what we see baptism as because <clears throat> the, the, the ultimate word we're looking for here is works righteousness, where it's, I got to work my way to God. Yeah. Instead, it's God worked his way to us. And Kira Knightley, when she says that it'd be so easy, she's an outspoken atheist. And when she says it'd be so easy to be a Christian, because I would just do whatever I want and then ask for forgiveness. Yeah. That's not obviously it. What you were saying, uh, you put it, again, you put it well, George, it's the faith and the works piece. You have faith, but then you back it up with the good deeds. And would you say that it's kind of the difference of sinning and, you know, feeling guilty about it and realizing what you've done wrong and being like, like having true regret about your sin versus doing the sin and being like, eh, well, I mean, you know, it's not that bad. Sorry. Right. I think he weighs the heart. Right. Like what you truly reflect on. And, and I think too, in what you brought up, cause we were talking about this recently and it's actually something that I recently learned that question, you know, when God asks you like, why do you think you made it to heaven? And it's not about you, right. It's about what he did for us. And it's something that kind of almost took off this weight of, when you do a good deed, it's, it's, it's not coming from a selfish place. And it's truly coming from a place of just like, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, for what you did for me. And, and, and I'm grateful to be here. And I love you. And I want to show you my love, my appreciation. And so, therefore, I'm going to do my best to show that to the people around me and, and to be the best that I can be for you. I got to ask you something else that's like, um, I'm just going to dig if you guys don't mind. Uh, how is it fair that a God who knows all, who sees all, sees a man who does not believe in Christ because he wasn't raised to believe in Christ. He's in a country where he can't even know God. I know that there's a, like, is it North Korea? North Korea changes their Bible. It's illegal to have your own Bible. Um, there's positions and places in the world where they cannot reach Christ. But they're the ones that are doing good work when no one's looking. They're the ones that are helping their neighbors. They're the ones who are doing acts greater than Christians that I see at church singing and praising God. But he passes away, never knowing Christ. And he never goes to heaven. How is that fair if there's an abundance and an almighty, merciful God? If I'm George Janko and I find that to be unmerciful, how is it fair and how can I convince a man to follow God if this is the direction that the Bible is explaining it to me? Romans 2 talks about... But I, I love the whole, like, you look at him, you're like, you want to get this one? I'll warm up. I'll warm up. When you, when you can't get it, I'll tap me in. And, and we go back and forth sometimes, especially if it, gets, if it gets real. Well, there's a few questions that get asked at church in front of the entire congregation when we do this Q&A, like we just did this last Sunday. Some of the questions you would not believe. Like, like one woman just front row said, what about masturbation? Like front row, it was a packed Sunday. <laughs> That's a great question, though. It's and a great when, question. You can imagine the squirming and ping ponging back and forth. It was unreal. <laughs> and some people started coming to our church because we allowed that question to get asked. Mm. I think a couple people probably left too. <laughs> but people heard around town. We're about circling that. back to that. All right. By yeah. the way. Yeah. I, 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 I have that, that in my arsenal. <laughs> we're gonna get to that. It, just, just a quick fire. Something that really helps me with that good question because that's one of my toughest. That's on like the top three for me for sure. But Romans 2 has helped when we get God talking about it's, it's the knowledge that has been given to you. You'll be judged based off of that knowledge. Mm. So you talked about the starry skies at night, beauty of nature, as well as the inner conscience. So that's evidence right there for any and everybody. 
Hebrews 11 talks about how the patriarchs are going to be in heaven. So Abraham, Isaac, and others, and they didn't even know who Jesus was. And then the last one that's really helped me a lot Whoa. recently. Whoa. That just messed me up a little bit. <laughs> But hold on, did they get the VIP pass because they were working alongside uh, God? Do you get what I'm saying? Right, right. Like, you don't need to know the bouncer if you knew the owner. Right, right. You know, like, <laughs> Maybe that one doesn't count. What, what do you think? What do you think about that one? It's the well, Hall of Fame. Yeah. He, Hebrews chapter 11 makes it clear that nobody's going to be in heaven because of their good works. Instead, it's because of their faith. And so Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, even the Rahab, the Gentile prostitute, had faith in God. In other words, they responded to all the light all the information that God gave them in humble faith. So God doesn't measure you off of your knowledge of, do you know the disciples? He, he, he measures you by what he given you and what you decided to believe in in that moment. Exactly. So if a man is in the middle of the wilderness, doesn't know who Jesus is, but he looks up at the stars and he goes, my God, there's something greater than me that's made this. Mm -hmm. Then in God's eyes, he goes, that's a humble man. That's a man that I could work with. Okay, yes, but we don't know, to be honest with you, George, we don't know how God is going to judge those who've never heard about Christ, because Christ never answered the question, so I can't make it up and say this is what Jesus said. He didn't say anything about it. But we do know that God is just, God is fair. He's more fair than I will ever be, than you'll ever be, so we do know that each of us will be judged fairly, uniquely, and justly. Secondly, we do know that we've all sinned. I mean, I was just thinking about this this morning. In my culture, it's not cool if you murder. What would I have done if I'd have been a German pastor at the time of Adolf Hitler? A lot of German pastors supported Hitler. A few German pastors stood up against him. One guy was Dietrich Bonhoeffer. He got hung in a death camp. I wonder what I would have done. I wonder if I would have had the courage to stop the Nazis from gassing Jews with everything in my power? Or would I have caved in to the pressure and said, oh, whoa, 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 whatever you want to do, you know, I'll, I'll keep my mouth shut. The human heart, as po Jesus pointed out, is deceitful. I'm a rascal. I'm real glad that you two don't see all of my motives on a screen right behind my head. That would be pretty embarrassing for me. And I appreciate your vulnerability in talking about, okay, my girlfriend and I, we're not exactly obeying Jesus in the area of sexuality. I respect that highly. That's vulnerable. That's honest. But it's wrong. Okay. And good. I don't. I don't. I don't sit here and, and paint it. And I always say that if God looked at me, I I, I hold I hold the weight of sin, because when we started, she wasn't fully uh, committed to the Lord as much as I was, and so I was. So it was my decision to go against that. So I pray that that not punishment, but that guilt, that weight is on me. And I pray that one day we, we are married and I fix that bond. Um, Beautiful. I, I just know that there's a man who sins and says, nah, it's not that big of a deal. And I tell people it's a very big deal. I, I made a mistake. Good for you. All right. So Jesus is dying on the cross. Two thieves are hung on either side of him. First thief turns to him and says, come on, miracle boy from Nazareth. Get us off these crosses. And then based on that, I'll believe in you. Come on, little miracle dust, Jesus. And when I see it, I'll believe. Second criminal turns to the first criminal and says, you idiot, we're dying here because we deserve it. But this Jesus, he's the innocent, holy, pure son of God. And the second criminal looks at Jesus and says, Lord Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And then today he All was. Right. Now, Jesus didn't say, whoa, 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 time out. First, you got to get baptized. Then you got to work in a soup kitchen. And then you got to give all your money or half of it to the poor. And then you got to genuflect. No, he didn't say that. He looks the guy in the face and he says, I tell you the truth. Today you'll be with me in paradise. Okay, so that's grace. Okay, he didn't deserve it, but he trusted in Christ. Christ forgave him and gave him eternal life. Now, if the guy would have gotten off the cross, would he have tried to be baptized? Would he have tried to celebrate communion? Would he have gone to church? Would he have given money to the poor? Absolutely. Would he have lived a perfect life? No way. None of us live a perfect life. Certainly I don't. But by the grace of God, he would have changed and become more the man that God created him to be than he was at that time. So you see, the real issue when it comes to faith is not how many works have you done. The real f issue is, is your faith genuine, sincere, or is it insincere? And sincere faith will be shown in the way I seek to obey Jesus. You've been vulnerable with me, I'll be vulnerable with you. I've had a ter terrible time with my temper. I've lost my temper with my wife, with my children, 
with students on college campuses, and I've had to ask for forgiveness an awful lot of times. And I'm not this wonderful guy that I wish everyone believe I am. I am a sinner, a rebel against God. But God loves this sinner so much, he sent his son Christ to give his life for me, to forgive me and give me eternal life. Now, if I sincerely put my faith in him, with his help, I'm gonna change. And if I don't change, then the question of hypocrisy comes up. And though it's what the verses that you quoted so accurately are all about, Matthew 7, 21 to 23, Jesus says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in, in, in heaven. Many will come to me on that day, that day of my return, and say, do we not prophesy in your name, perform any miracles, do good deeds? I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. See, we didn't have that relationship, that mm -hmm. connection. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. So no one's going to be heaven. No one's going to heaven because they were a good old boy, mm -mm. which contradicts cultural American Christianity. Cultural American Christianity says, be a good girl, be a good boy. And God smiles on good boys and good girls. Yeah, but the problem is none of us are good none as of us. God defines good. None That's why we all need Christ. I always get asked when, like, uh, when I'm on the street, they go, how do you... How are you so vulnerable, um, like speaking about things that you're dealing with? Because mm -hmm. uh, Christians are like, I have a hard time even talking to my best friend about it, but you don't care about being on a podcast. And my thought process behind this is, man, I'm so terrified of what Jesus thinks of me and what I'm doing that I could really care less of what an audience member thinks of me. Mm -hmm. They don't have the passing judgment of who and where I'm going. So if I, if I think that the... And I want to say this to see if I'm correct. I think a man is either going to worry about what the world thinks of them mm -hmm. or what God thinks of them. Very good. And it's so much more freeing and mm -hmm. so much rewarding yep. when you put it on a God who's merciful yep. instead of a world that will never, never see it from your point of view.